And in that attempt to understand religion, Professor Luba brought together 48 definitions of religion from different authors and professors. And then he added two of his own definitions of religion to make the definition 50 in number. Then he articulated these 50 definitions of religion and then was able to produce a definition of religion. Although other thinkers had given 47 definitions of religion, those 47 definitions were rejected. Now Professor Luba added two of his own and gathered these different definitions of religion with the aim of developing a comprehensive concept of religion. At the day that Professor Luba presented his definition of religion, taken from 50 different definitions of religion, his definition of religion was rejected. Which means that an understanding or the definition of religion is not something that you say that you have that is static. The definition of religion varies from person, from one thinker to another, from one scholar to another, from one work to another, from one discipline to another. But not minding the different definitions of religion, there are three basic elements in any understanding of religion. And these elements are the elements of belief, because there must be a belief in the supreme being. There is also the element of cult and worship, through which the human person expresses his respect and adoration for that supreme being. There is that aspect of morals in religion, and these morals establishes the basis of relationship between the human person and that supreme being that is in existence. And so three things in every understanding of religion, in spite of the differences in understanding of religion, in spite of the enigmatic concept of religion, these three basic tenets are always found in religion. Uh, that the sense of belief, there is cult and worship, and there is morals. Now, having understood religion, having understood uh, philosophy in very simple terms, we now come to the basic concern of our study. And that basic concern is, how is SPSS applicable in the study of philosophy and religion? First of all, let us begin with a general understanding of research so that we gain from here where SPSS is applicable. First of all, in every research, at the very beginning, we begin with the question, what is the problem? Every research begins with a research problem. It is when you have gotten a research problem that you know that your research is researchable. Without a research problem, your research is not researchable. It is the research problem that actually gives you the context for the generation of the topic for your research. You don't generate a topic for research when you have not identified the research problem. The research problem should be that which moves you to begin to think of that research. And then gradually, you articulate what you want to do within the context of a title. The application of SPSS is not in this first level of research. It's not at the level of research problem. The next stage in research is to select the research design. What method of research are you going into? What are you interested in doing? Or what you are interested in discovering? Or what you are interested in finding out will determine the research methodology or the research design that you are going to employ. Is it going to be a qualitative research? Is it going to be a quantitative research? What kind of method are you going to use during the process of research? Is it going to be observation? Is it going to be questionnaire? Is it going to be, what kind of method are you going to? These are the basic questions you bring to bear while trying to design the research method, the research design. Now, the research design has a connection with the execution of the research design. And the execution of the research design, that is actually where the SPSS comes in, in research methodology. Therefore, research methodology 
the SPSS does not come in at the point of research problem, even though it is related. It does not come in at the point of research design, even though it is related. It comes in at the point of executing the research design. When you have had your research design and the time for its execution comes, then you begin to bring in the idea of SPSS because it helps you in the analysis of data. It helps you in the analysis of data, statistical analysis of data. When you collect the data, when you have executed the design, and then you begin to analyze what you have, that is where SPSS comes in in research. Now, after you have collected your data in SPSS and analyzed it, then you give a report in the next stage. That is communication of research result. And so research design, when it comes to SPSS, SPSS is found within the context of the execution of research design, in between the research design and the report that you give. As I said earlier, SPSS is concerned about quantitative research. How does this relate to philosophy and religion? Most especially when it comes to philosophy and religion, researches are not basically quantitative. Researches in philosophy and religion are basically qualitative research. For instance, when you are asked the question, what is the effect of COVID-19 in the practice of religion? This research is a research within the context of religion. But although it is a research within the context of religion, there is the possibility of the application of SPSS in this research. First of all, you go about your interview, you go about your analysis. When you have collected your data, then you begin to codify them. Who holds this? Some will say it affects religion. Some will say COVID-19 does not affect religion. Some will say that it affects, but not seriously. When you have collected these different perspectives, the numbers of those who have said it affects, the numbers of those who said it does not affect, the numbers of those who say that it affects, but not seriously, and then you begin to codify them. You bring them first under teams, and then you begin to codify them. At that point of codification and the collection of numbers in terms of people with different perspectives, you can bring in SPSS in the study of religion. This does not mean that in every study of religion or philosophy that SPSS applies. No. There are areas in the study of philosophy and religion where SPSS cannot apply. When you have clearly and purely qualitative research, like an understanding of the theology of God in religion, you cannot bring SPSS within the context of this study. It is not possible. The study of or the theology of God in Hinduism, you cannot bring in SPSS within the context of this study. When you ask what are the theological foundations of the Trinity, you cannot bring SPSS within the context of this study. You bring in SPSS within the context of religion and philosophy, only within areas where you can make a collection of perspectives and then these perspectives are codified or thematized, and from this you are able to generate all kinds or other, other, other dimensions of studies. So for instance, let us pick an area within the study of uh, philosophy. For instance, philosophy. Let us take a case study. And with this case study, let us see what we are able to do. The case study within the context of philosophy is, what is the relevance or the relevance of philosophy to the banking industry in Nigeria? The relevance of philosophy to the banking industry in Nigeria. This is a study within the context of philosophy. But an understanding of the relevance of philosophy to the banking industry is different from 